Hey everybody, this is the Random Podcast of Awesomeness, and we're back again. We're doing yes, a little we better. Are. We're doing a little better with uh, getting back to you guys now. This week... Mm, partially because we're doing somewhat shorter games. That's true, too. So, anyway, I'm Shadow Wolf. And I'm good at 14. This week we played the game Digimon Racing, which is... At the request of Gurdet14. Which is a pretty basic game. Uh, yes, yeah, so if you guys have played your uh, basic mass kart racers, you've pretty much played Digimon Racing, and there are some there are some things that we're going to need to go over with this. As you know, it has Digimon in it, and racing. Yes. It's kind of yes. like Those Mario There are two basic racing. things that we need to go over. Now, if you were hoping that Digimon Racing was going to follow any of the plot lines in any of the other games, like, you know, Digimon Rumble Arena, or Digimon Rumble Arena 2, or any of the Digimon World games, or even follow the anime to any extent, you are hoping for way too much. Yeah, there, there is this... Seriously. All the Digimon, this is racing. The Digimon, fran- the Digimon franchise as a whole has no cohesive real story, per se. Even our movie license game doesn't really have a story in relation to the rest of the digital world. Basically what happens is you go around tracks with other Digimon and after like three uh, three different things in the cup you go against the boss. Well, depends on which cup. Right, you right. See, it depends on there... which cup. In order to elongate the game, there are a total of 12 tracks in this game, which is, you know, a detriment to it, but, you know, it's not that bad. I mean, it's better than Sonic R, which only has five tracks, although I think now we'll get into that later. However, there are eight cups. Or wait, most, no, it's nine cups, yeah, sorry. There's nine cups. Uh, yes. Most of them are just rematched of the first three. Actually, all of them are rematched of the first three. Oh, right, right. All of them are rematched of the first three ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this game, you get to pick from from uh, how many is it? Eight? I think it's eight different characters. I think it's eight at the start, and uh, depending on how much of a completionist you are, you can get up to eleven. Spoilers: there are in fact uh, secret racers in this, although. Uh, additional spoilers, you'll be racing against the secret racers at all times. Now, I personally went with Salomon pretty much the whole thing. I, I played with them all, but Salomon was probably my favorite. And, and, to, and to be honest, even though um, uh, Salomon and Agumon are clearly the best racers, the, they you can actually see the stats of the racers beforehand, and Nagamon and Salamon are the most balanced out with a tier 3 in both and all three of the stats, acceleration, top speed, and handling. Mind you, unless your character has literally tier 1 handling, which there are characters like that, like I think Gabumon's got tier 1 handling, pretty much everyone controls about, about the same, and none of the only other stat that I find that is actually you know worth worrying about is... Um, well, just handling, really. At least how I play. But Yeah, uh, hand, handling's kind of uh, tricky. I found that using Palmon was actually a bit more comfortable for me, but um, even, going, even using after using Palmon for a while, I went right back to using Agumon, who is coincidentally one of my favorite person's favorite Digimon. See, we're going to get into this in a minute anyway, but... Uh whole reason I like Salomon is each character has their own ability. And yes. Salomon's is evolve. the most... Right. And Salomon's is the most broken. At, at least I feel that way. Um, I, I will... I have to agree that Salomon's ability is pretty broken. It's far more broken than uh, Togemon's. The thing is, all the Digivolved abilities are uh, defensive in nature. They're all defensive in nature. So much so to, even though you can have technically two power-ups at once, one your digital ability, one a, uh, a track power-up that you get from uh, running into uh, item crates, if you have your digital up, that's the one that it's going to set up. And um, 
we'll get more into that when we actually start discussing gameplay. But yeah, these are all very defensive, and got and, uh, and Mons is very powerful. I'll, I'll give you that. But I want to say that probably I know that one of the uh, did you. It's either a Digivolve special ability or a track item. Nukes the entire field, spins everybody out, and does some massive damage. I'm not sure wh whose ability it is, though. I want to say it's Kabuto Terrymon's, but I don't think it is. Yeah, I can't think of it right off either. Uh, but I, so I anyway, hit with it a lot. God damn. So anyway, you go through... Like, each uh, cup has its own theme. Mm -hmm. Well, after the first three, at least. Right. See, the first three cups are the Eastern, uh, Western, and the Central. And, and you'll be going through all 12 tracks do during these three cups. And after each of the cups, you will unlock a boss battle that you'll have to do a total of twice throughout the whole game. And the bosses are pretty easy. Uh, they're easy on after multiple after like your second attempt. Learning the well, track layout and where the item crates are for the bosses is actually a problem that I've got. But we need to actually restructure this because <laughs> we're just going all over the place. All right, so the story. No, there is no there story. There is no story. <laughs> the the story here. You are Digimon in carts. Go play Crash Bandicoot. Pretty much. There, there, there is your story. Seriously, CTR is awesome, and you should all play it. Anyway, um, the gameplay elements in this are actually rather interesting, even though we've seen most, if not all, of these before. Just like your traditional Mario Kart, uh, kart racing clone, um, you use your A button to accelerate. I don't think your B button does anything, not that I tried it, because I think it's supposed to brake. I think that's what it's supposed to do. Yeah, probably. But I... I never bother to actually figure out if it does that or use it. I'm actually going to pause you so just for a second. So don't ask me how successful, you know, uh, brake turning is, because I don't... All right, Sorry so... Sorry that, we just had a little blip, but anyway. Yes, and, um... Okay, the gameplay. Um, a, to accelerate. B, to possibly brake. We're not testing that either, so... And um, the the L button allow is it L? Yes, the L button allows you to fire either your Digivolve ability or your picked up item. These yeah. items these items are mostly pointless usually. There's the blue sphere which acts like a non homing missile. Why do you even have it? The red sphere which acts like a homing missile and long time disabler. Jesus, that thing is powerful. It's pretty much a red shell with superpowers. Yeah, pretty much. The bomb which lays behind you and you only ever seem to get that power up or the in first place or the shield which you know uh, uh slits on you for about 10 to 20 seconds I think it is it's probably and the it most will, useful and it will absorb uh, one attack. Uh there's also the speed up which you'll only get if you're in second or lower place and you know it's uh, pretty much allows you to speed up for about 3 seconds. Pretty effective but you know not that but not that required. And then there's also the the uh, Digivolve bar increase one, which, you know, almost is guaranteed to knock you into your uh, Digivolve state. Right. As it restores a full meter of your Digivolution, uh, of your Digivolution, which serves as your health bar. That is very, very important. See, even though all the Digimon have, a, uh, have set base stats, all of their Digivolve forms have increased stats. I don't know what these stats are. Or, you know, how increased they are. But I can tell you this. Racing around as a champion is much faster than racing around as a, yes, as a rookie. Is. And racing around as a rookie is at least slightly faster than racing around as an in-training. If you take too much damage, you will end up, you know, getting knocked into your in-training mode. And that is just unpleasant. Your acceleration, your top speed, your turning, it all goes to crap, man. It's like trying to control a sausage mobile with no wheels. <laughs> So, uh, but there is some saving grace in this, as well. Your champions take less damage while in champion form, and thankfully your Digiv your Digivolve Beetle does not naturally peter out, which is a good thing and a godsend. If any of you have played the, Digi the Digimon Rumble Arena series, however, the other option that we hit that we have not talked about yet is the R button, which allows you to jump insanely high. 
Yes. However, yes, very useful. Not high enough to bounce to jump over freaking walls. No. Now that that is a serious problem with oh, for me right now because you jump literally about three times the size of your character, and these walls are less than one fourth the size of your character, and yet. If you try to jump over those walls, you will crash into them, back up, get stunned, and end up just wasting time. And probably get knocked into the third. Or whatever place you may be in. Or if you're doing really poorly, get hit into the wall, get bounce off the wall and into the bo- into the bottomless uh and into the bottomless swamp pit, which, you know, not only sends you back a couple meters, but pretty much de digivolves you and makes you look like a laughing stock. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, don't try to jump over the walls, but definitely abuse the jump. Because while you're on the track, uh, and this is on every track, there are certain patches of ground that slow you down, you know, just like a normal race course would. If you go on the main course, you're at at top speed, you handle perfectly, and all that kind of good stuff. However, by using your jump appropriately, you can generate your own shortcuts. Specifically by jumping over those dense portions of grass or the dark patches of dirt or the bottomless freaking cloud pits. <laughs> it is mandatory that you have the ability to jump, by the way. Elsewise, you're never going to finish the race. Or if you do, you'll end up in last place and wonder, well, how the hell am I supposed to beat this? Well, you have to jump over the bottomless cloud pits. Yeah, cloud Kingdom can go suck it. Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention there are actual... Uh... There are actually actual tracks where you do have to jump in order to get through it. Yes, Cloud Kingdom, and I believe Swamp Bog is... Uh, Swamp Bog isn't technically one of them, but it helps a lot. Yeah. Coastline, not so much. Uh, but since we're on the topic of tracks, let's go through the list of tracks. Okay, now, there are nine cups in this game, and each, and each race corresponds to a certain theme. Or so they say, except we end up seeing Cloud Kingdom a lot. Yes, yes, you do. Now, in, after beating the first three cups and all three of the boss battles attached to those cups, we'll get over those in a minute, don't worry. Um, you, get, you get access to the first of the elemental cups, which I think was burning, wasn't it? It's either burning or freezing. I think it's burning. It's got to be burning, because I know freezing's after that, because, yeah. All right. So you, you go into the Burning Cup, and you have to race on Volcano, Desert Oasis, and what was the other one? Desert Cliffs? That sounds about right. Okay. Now, uh, Desert Oasis is, is, a very, is one of the first tracks that you race on. It's very simple, very basic, and it introduces you to a lot of the ga- uh, game's main gimmicks, like road hazards. Running into uh, the Edamon or Chumon on this race will... Well, stun you a bit, knock you back a bit, and overall just make your day a little bit that a little bit more terrible. Otherwise, there's not really a lot here. You can't really get flown into bottomless pits because there are none, I believe. And this is also one of the race one of the races where it's the easiest to get digivolve into your digivolve form. Now, in order to digivolve, we didn't cover this, and I apologize, but in order to digivolve, you must go across these these checkered patterns on. Um, on the tracks that are supposed to be data streams. Yeah. Now, if you're familiar with Digimon lore, Digimon are packets of data. So it makes no sense at all that going through data streams would actually increase the amount of data that they held. But they're magic cars, so take your pick. I don't know. <laughs> but yes, um, you have to go across these tracks uh, for a long enough period of time, and then you'll be able to digivolve. Continue on these tracks, and you'll get your Digivolve Evolution after reaching the full three bars. This is the only way to heal your character throughout the game, unless you get unless you get the Digivolve Power Up item, which you only get if you're in like second or lower. But you'll, and, you'll um, more you'll more than likely always have your champion form if you're a decent. If player. you're decent at the game, yes. However. Be sparing with your attacks, because one of the things that we also didn't mention is that every time you use either the item box or your, Digivol- or your Digimon special ability, you lose a big chunk of your Digivolve bar. Whereas the item boxes don't drain that much, I think it's about one-fifth of a section, your, di- your Digivolve attack will drain up like four-fifths of, of your entire third form. It's, yeah. it's, pretty, it's pretty bad. 
which is why I say all of these powers are defensive in nature. You want to use them when you're just about to lose, you're in second place, and your op is just about ready to cross the finish line. You hit them with Nova Blast, you hope they go careening into the bottomless pit, which they sometimes do. I don't know how. I hit them with fire from behind, and now he went to the left into the bottomless pit. I think he's worse at driving at me than this game. <laughs> So much so that I can't even form coherent sentences about it. Um, but yes, the powers are very defensive in this game. Um, and, well, that really covers a lot of the... That really covers most of the gameplay elements I forgot. But going back to the tracks, I don't remember Desert Cliffs that much. Since I raced it maybe twice. We pretty much discussed like most of what the levels are like. Most levels will have a spot where you can actually take a shortcut. Actually, all the levels have that. There's always darkened ground that you can try and jump over. However, jumping does decrease your speed, so you got to make sure that, that shortcut that you make for yourself both works and was worth it. Otherwise, you're not going to have that much fun here. A lot of it is also when you take a shortcut, uh, you should probably try to time your jumps. Definitely. Remember that while Digivolve that you that you jump much farther because you're going much faster. Because some of those spots you have to just 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 jump just right in order to get through. Cloud Kingdom is notorious for this. There's a there is a there is a, a certain path in Cloud Kingdom that if you want to take the shortcut, you have to jump way early so you can jump way late. Right. And that 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 particular shortcut can go screw itself. I don't like that shortcut. I will go the long way around to avoid that shortcut. Oh. Uh, a lot of these levels have, it, especially if you take the shortcut, something that will decide to attack you and take most of your uh, health bar down so that your, your stats are now lowered. In your Actually, I find that those guys are mostly on the main path and only in specific areas. For example, um, one, one of the ones that we keep bringing up, Cloud Kingdom, because we all hate Cloud Kingdom. Let's get that out of the way. We all hate Cloud Kingdom. It's pretty it's much used, like it, uh, Rainbow Road. and It's not quite as bad as Rainbow Road. Personally, I think that the, the caves is more Rainbow Road in here because it's technically the last track you race on. Yeah. But you race on, on Cloud Kingdom so many times. And it is, and it's one of those races where you dread going to it because you know if you screw up too much, you're gonna take last place. But then again, it doesn't really matter if you do well enough in the other two courses. Now, does it? We'll get into that. But um, a lot of the times, there are there are enemies in certain sections of the track that will try and hinder your project progress, like Snow Gaboramon, Mojamon, and Bomber Chumon. I don't know what his name actually is, but he's a mouse with fucking balloons. Yes. And these just serve mostly as road obstacles. Now, you can avoid most of their attacks by either jumping or, you know, having the guys in front of you take the brunt of their attacks. The Mojamon attacks are just definitely you want to do that. Get yourself in third for that section and watch as your opponent skid off into the bottomless ice. But most, for the most part, just do as much jumping as you can to avoid them. Yeah. Jumping is usually the preferred method to avoid these, although, although there are a few that are delayed direct fire. I know for a fact that if you don't jump at the right time, the, the bomber Chumon's uh, orb will hit you, and you will spin out, and yes. you will be sad. And there are no ice cream cones in Cloud Kingdom to make you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a lot of the tracks follow the same basic formula, although their layouts are very varied, if you will. I should find a better way to, to link those two terms, but I can't at the moment. Um, but yeah, other than being mostly obstacle courses, these races are, although not difficult, can be frustrating. Nah, I'm looking at you, Swamp Bog. How am I supposed to know that I can't drive through the freaking bottomless water pit? Right. Mm. However, the same thing can be said for the boss tracks. There are three boss tracks in this game. And they're not – well, they are technically named. There's the Factory, which is Omnimons, and I don't even care what the other two names are, but they're Malamiotismon and Diaboromon, not yeah. in that order. 
Omnimon's fight is the simplest of them, as all you got to do, well, in order to damage the boss, what you have to do is go around and pick up an item, wait for him to go into his stagger, his stagger animation, and throw it at him. You have to do this three times. Now, the first attempt, you're more than likely going to fail, as you don't know where the items are, you're not entirely sure how you're supposed to hit him, and, well, when you get hit, it stuns you for a bit, so... You got a minute and a half to take down Omnimon. I think it's two minutes to take down both Diaboramon and Malamiotismon. Which is actually more than enough time. You can take down these guys in about a minute if you know what you're doing. And Malamiotismon, despite being the final boss, is actually the easiest of them. Yeah. He's the most annoying to fight, mind you, but he's the easiest of them. It's kind of weird that way. Yeah, um, all you really have to do is just make sure you don't get hit. Yeah. Especially in Malamiotismon. And the other ones, you can actually tank the hits and do just fine. It's kind of funny that way. Yeah. But Malamiotismon is the one where you definitely need to avoid. And if you can't avoid, and if you do avoid him successfully, he's piss easy. However, the tracks in this matter are not. Omnimon's track may be incredibly simple with just the conveyor belt thing going on, which is annoying but doable. Yeah. But Diaboromon's track is annoying for a wholly different reason. While going through Diaboromon's track, there's only two item boxes there, and around the entire track, especially around where he's going to spawn in to fight you because he teleports around the ring, unlike Omnimon, uh, there are the virus panels. And the virus panels only show up here, are never used again, and they drain your Digivolution meter, which is your health bar. And if you send on them for too long, you go into court, you go into your in training form, and I don't think that they can take you down. Well, no, I know that they can take you down to effectively zero, but you can't actually die if you take hit here. So it's okay. Just get yourself back on the nor- on the normal checkered pattern, and you'll you'll do okay. You'll get back to Greymon and be able to, or whatever champion you've chosen, and drive around again. However, Malomyotismon is the big exception here. While Malamiotismon still has the data, the data streams allowing you to go into champion, I do recommend it, but I also recommend you learn how to drive. Because <laughs> Malamiotismon's course is a pain, not because it's particularly long, but because in order to get to Malamiotismon in any decent amount of time, you have to be both very fast and very skilled at water jumping. And these are bottomless water pits. It is not fair. Yeah. Uh, after after you get into the central ring, though, all all you're really doing is waiting for him to attack two or three times. It's I find it varies with Malamiotismon. Sometimes he'll go into stagger after two. Usually it's three. Both Omnimon and Diaboromon go into stagger after three. So it's pretty basic, though. And they are basic boss fights, but they but that doesn't mean that they're not annoying. They're annoying like the first time. Yeah, they're definitely annoying the first time. I'll go on record and say I lost Omnimon and Malamiotismon the first time. Malamiotismon, the, tr- the course killed me because I was like, where do I go? And nobody helped me. I, it was kind of just a despondent wail of inquiry and there was no one to help. But yeah, it was... yeah it, it's, it's, the whole game is sort of annoying, but if you're actually a decent player, you're going to get through this game pretty quickly. Um, you say that, and yet I didn't finish it until two days ago. <laughs> uh, now, the thing... The, now, we've gone through the gameplay. Uh, sound design, there's not really much here. I mean, the music tracks are okay. The sounds sound like you would... The, the sounds sound like you would expect them to. Basic jumps and part... And uh, there is voice acting. I was, oh, I was yes, just about have, to mention that. We have voice clips, people. I don't know if the right if they're the right ones because the processing on the GBA is not the best, but we have voice clips. I just don't know if they're accurate, and they're not really that important either. They're yeah, just kind of there. They're they're there. They happen every once in a while while you're driving. Yes, like if you pass someone to take first place or second place, you'll hear a sound clip. When Omnimon, Diaboromon, and Malamiotismon are attacking, they'll actually call out their attack. Yeah. Just ha- which is really how you cheese Malamiotismon. You want to cheese Malamiotismon, turn your speakers on, because he ain't doing nothing to you then. Let's see here. Uh, graphics? Graphics are horrible. Yeah. 
I, I have to say this. This is one of my biggest peeves about this game. Even Battle Spirit, which we will probably not be going over, but both Battle Spirit games look far better than this. And those were just barely animated. This has even less animation and yet looks far worse. The, this, the graphics here always look incredibly pixelated and trying to and trying to buffer, and yet there's not really much to buffer. These models are not that complex, and they're and they're mostly stationary. I don't understand why these why these look so bad. You can count the pixels of the bottomless pits. You shouldn't, mind you, but you can. <laughs> also, the other thing that it was kind of weird for me. But in some of the tracks, you'll be driving, and, like, you'll be looking forward. But really, what you should be look, doing is looking at the track. Yeah. Uh, underwater is very, very guilty of this, which is why one of the easiest shortcuts is actually on the main track for underwater. Um, well, the whole thing about, about that particular course is that there is this a potential of a serpentine turn, like, for, through the first, the uh, third... Uh, underwater. Thing is, if you drive your car straight straight through that segment, you'll gain a huge lead, and as long as you can do that each lap, you're guaranteed to win that race. Yeah. But yeah. Because the thing is, the computer actually is trying to follow the wall on the track layout, which means they're serpentining through that, and it's like, uh-uh, I'm not doing that, because right at the end of that serpentine is just a straight shot into a sharp turn. You don't need to serpentine it. But yeah, those those particular uh, levels make me think. Well, this is not very good for people at Vertigo. Mm. And I know that one of my one of my least favorite court, one of my least favorite uh, times of that is with the uh, po- was the polar snow cap level, where there are multiple paths that you can go, and if you follow the straight path, you'll see the uh, data stream uh, coming up onto your life. That's actually the end of the other path. So what I end up doing commonly. And this doesn't usually cost me the race because I get my Digivolve out of it. What I end up doing commonly is I end up turning my car around to land on that, thinking it's the right way to go. It's not. I end up turning myself backwards, ending in fourth, but getting my Digivolution. So, uh, it's a trade-off. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, uh, Polar Snowcap has, has that as a problem for me. It's one of the only courses where I find it. I really have that kind of an issue, though. Most of the time, the courses are laid out enough to where it's not really that difficult to, uh, you know, use. Mm. But yeah, um, graphics not so good. Yeah, the graphics in this are just freaking horrible. Even the particle effects, which look okay, could clearly be done better. I mean, for a Game Boy Advance game, this this was not Game Boy Advance graphics. No, this I would I would go on I would probably say that this was like early game gear graphics. It yeah. kind of looks like that to me. It just does. Cuz I look at like Sonic Drift and I like see a lot of the same issues that I see here, so But yeah, it's very comparable to most other racing games with just just the elements especially of... mascot kart racers. Yeah. Just with the element of being able to digivolve, that's pretty much it. That's the only unique thing about this, except it's not. You see, uh, uh, this is uh, this is uh, technically going back onto gameplay. I tried to restructure it and look well, what I'm doing. I'm just bouncing all over the place too. But gone, the, no one handles well in this game. Nobody. I'll admit that I had not raced with every racer, and I was supposed to try out a Goonimon before starting up this, but I didn't. But nobody handles well. The only real way that I figure that I can figure out how to keep my speed going after a nice turn is to either modulate my accelerator, which I don't even know if it works. I am seriously don't. I think modulating your XL doesn't really work in this game. Or jumping around corners, creating all of my own shortcuts. It's the best way to do it, pretty much. And doing that will send you into a colossal drift, too. It, but you can't do normal hard turns. Because if you do a normal hard turn, especially if you're like in a rookie or in training stage, you'll just spin out and careen into the bottomless spike pit again. It doesn't even have spikes, and I'm calling it a bottomless spike pit. 
But yeah, you're going to end up hitting some sort of obstacle, spinning out, and not having fun. Yeah. And that's really a problem that the entire game has. This just isn't that fun of a game. I'm I'm playing through this, and I'm like, okay, I can do all of this, and I'm having some fun with it, you know? Like, the challenge is still definitely there, but one of the major things about uh, about this game that makes it actually not that fun is the incredibly just broken uh, tro- uh, just broken leader system. Let me put it to you this way. You know how in uh, on the mascot cup racers, uh, the mascot uh, cart racers, when you do a cup, you are awarded points for every race you win. Right, Mr. Shadow? Yes. Well, in this game, winning the race nets you a grand total of 27 points. Now, this wouldn't be that bad, that bad of a deal if the people in the places below you actually had a reasonable um, actually had reasonable points, you know, from you. But no, you get 27 points for winning the race. Your second place gets 18, and third place gets nine, and it halves every time I'm under that, as far as I can remember. So fun. until last place gets zero. Right. So realistically. You only need to win two races. Because after winning two races, you have 54 points. Literally, even if the guy that took second two times wins the next race, the most that he's going to do is tie. And that's if you take anything and that's if you take anything less than fifth, which is last place. You take fifth place, you still win by one point, mind you, but you still win. Which is you only need to perform well in two of these races. Right. And it's very depressing because on that note, there should be more challenge to that. I should I should actually have to fight in all three races instead of just be like, whatever. Mind you, I will say that I am a total pansy and I only played this game on the easy difficulty. There, it's quite likely that the computer gets a lot more cheap and rubber bandy if you put the difficulty on higher settings. I bet Shadow doesn't even know where the easy difficulty setting is. I actually didn't go into it, but... Yes. So Shadow played this game on normal mode and was still done with it before I was. Man. <sighs> but the one thing I I really... This is something that kind of gets to me. Is the last cup is the boss cup. Mm-hmm. And you've already fought the bosses, so you know how to play them. Now, you play the bosses, and they're not any harder. They keep them at the same difficulty. The only thing is you just fight them one more time. Yeah. This game is very repetitive in that matter. I mean, they could have saved themselves with this row with a more diverse track selection, or at least more tracks, and less cups, actually. If they had had more tracks at like greater lengths, but with less cups, you know, instead of giving us the four elemental cups when there's really only three elements. Right. Seriously, you racing Cloud City freaking three times. Why? The game pretty much is just copy paste, copy paste all over. Yeah. I personally think that this should have been knocked down to seven cups. No. The you had got three three for your elements, three for your three to unlock the rest of the tracks. Boom. Yeah, and the and the boss cup. I do agree that we should have the boss cup, okay. But like Shadow said, I do think that they should have either cut the time a little bit, not too much, because Mal and my Otis mom will laugh at you for it, or you know, change the boss strategy, make them a little bit more difficult. Either make their uh, their stun animations shorter, or have their attacks actually do something more, or even better yet, have an additional cup as a secret boss, you know. That'd be a fun idea, actually. Yeah, like, I uh, have... Uh, not Mallow, my Otis Mon. Uh, hell! Have Duskmon show up. A Goonimon's here. Clearly yeah. this was supposed to be a, a spoiler for uh, Digimon Frontier. Because, you know, a Goonimon doesn't actually make that many appearances otherwise. So, yeah, it would have been nice to have seen either Duskmon or, you know, Cherubimon show up. I think... I think the game might have been more fun if you actually got to play two-player mode. Believe it or not, it's a GBA title, so multiplayer is not really accessible. 
but it's there. There is multiplayer in this game, and it's the same with all all, all the other GBA multiplayer things that we've reviewed. You have to have a link cable, right. which means that Shadow and I can't actually do this because neither of us have link cables. Yes, that is the reason. Neither of us have link cables. But yeah, being as uh, even the fact that we're so far apart, we couldn't even do it. But yes. I, I think this game probably would be a little more fun if you could play multiplayer. It would be, but it wouldn't be that much more fun. I recall going through, uh, I recall going through Mario Kart Double Dash and using the second player as a cheat, pretty much. You know, <laughs> just knocking one opponent out of the race so I could actually finish the World, the World Cup Grand Prix. Yes, I, I did that, and then I, you know, stopped doing that when I got better. Sadly, this is a game that I don't see myself getting much better in. And there really isn't much point to. There isn't much point to playing this game. Hell, the unlocks that are supposedly here require you to 100% a certain race type. You have no idea how annoying it is to go through all all nine of the cups and unlock a Goonimon and then be told that in order to get the other two secret racers, which are Vimon and I don't know who the other one is. I think it's Guillemon actually. Yep, Guillemon. Yeah, to get Guillemon and Vimon you have to do both the time the the time trial races and the quick races. And you have to do all of them. No, I'm not doing that. That's that's me 100% in the game to get two additional racers that not only do I'm, am I not going to use, I'm not going to ever play with. Granted, I did not look at their stats, so I don't know if they're better than uh, Salomon and, and Agumon. But if they're, if they're not, because I'm racing against them constantly, the only reason I would go in with Guillemon is because Pyrosphere is so freaking busted. Right. Ooh. Huge damage. Spiral me out. Throw me into the air. This is not a game that I would recommend for anyone to get. I had some fun with it, yes, but this is not a game I'm going to be going back to. Yeah, I mean, I kind of regret actually playing it, but I played it anyway. And I don't uh, regret playing it. I don't, because I do think that this could have worked if it was on, you know, an actual console. They had done a lot more with it, actually given it a story, you know. Give it pretty much the exact replica of a Mario Kart treatment, except throwing the Digimon story, okay? D- if they had done that with it, or even better yet, thrown in the, ba- the Digimon Rumble Arena story, okay? Let's see Reapermon again. What happened to him? <laughs> I miss him. He's in one game and never shows up. So, uh, I think we've pretty much bashed the game as good as we can, uh... Hey, we try to support this game, okay? There's just not much here. So probably uh, give our final scores now, I guess. Yes, we're up to the final four. I'll go first. Uh, like, like, I, like we said, the music wasn't really memorable. It was there, but it wasn't really all that memorable. And the graphics, I didn't care for. The only thing I actually liked about this is the fact that you could actually digivolve. I thought that was like the only cool thing about the game. And that even wasn't that great. Uh, so I'm going to give this maybe a 4.5 out of 10. Trying to make me look like the bad guy. Maybe not even a four and a half. I'll actually, I'll actually give this a three. Mm, now you're trying to make me look like the good guy. Yeesh. But yeah, we we've we've covered it. We've covered it enough, and uh, there is enjoyment to be had in this game. It's just way too hard to get. It's just way too hard to find. I'm not a hundred percenting this game, and I don't expect anyone else to. I can't stand the graphics in this. That's really one of my major problems. It's just unpleasant and dirty to look at. There is a lot of... I think that there is a lot of potential here, but it's just not executed well. As such, I'm going to give this a straight up four. There's... I would not come back to this game. I would not recommend this game to anybody, but I cannot say that it's the most horrible game I've ever played. 
No, there mainly because are... I don't think I ever beat that game. There are a lot. There are a lot worse games. There are a lot worse mascot kart racers, even. Yeah. I'm not sure if we're playing those. Shadow, please tell me we're not playing those. No, I I, I don't particularly care for racers, so I think we're all set on that. All right. Uh, but yeah, I don't really recommend playing this game. Nor do I. This is a game that even Digimon hardcore fans, such as myself, I am a Digimon game fanboy. Oh, yes. Send your hate mail here. All of it. <laughs> but, but yes, even I cannot really get behind this game. I have that same problem with Digimon World 1, but that's a topic for another day. Well, I think that's all we have to say, so thanks for listening. Again, this has been the Random Podcast of Awesomeness. This is Shadow Wolf. And this is Gurdet14. Have a good one, guys. Be safe.